Good afternoon. My name is Kichi Tapakop Escotewa Squail. I'm also known as Emily Henry. I'm part of the Archway, Archway Board of Directors. I'm honored to be and blessed to be part of their directors. I want to welcome you to the first National Indigenous People's Day celebration for Archway. Although they've participated in other events, this is the first time that we host your presence and good, good thoughts towards us. And I just want to say thank you. I also want to raise my hands with profound gratitude for the people of this land that share their resources in such generous ways with so many people that I know and love and respect and admire. I want to say thank you for the people that stepped forward to organize this and they did so with such beauty and honor for our ancestors. And so I'm just going to name a few, but that's just a few because there's so many. But I'll start with Rod, who immediately just championed this, and Kelly, and Louise, and Erica, who are all part of making this happen. We also have an Indigenous circle that began a couple months ago. It seems like a short time, but it's actually a, a bit of a longer time. And it's so exciting to have that. And so they championed this celebration. Today is so important because it, it acknowledges the First Nation, the Métis and the Inuit in Canada, the traditional people of Canada. And I started with that traditional acknowledgement and there's people all across Canada that live on the traditional lands of the people that were first here. There's so many contributions that our people have brought forward and we opened our lands and our doors and shared our resources. And I'm so grateful for that because what a blessing to be part of such a diverse, rich land. It's so beautiful. So as we do in always, we begin with a, a prayer, but I, just before that, I just wanted to say, when we talked about this event, we also talked about what's happening in Canada today. And what's happening in Canada today is that we are discovering and uncovering some truths of the past. And it's hard, it makes us Sometimes it, it hurts us and sometimes it brings pain. And at the same time, as we're doing today, we are bringing reconciliation and healing. And that's what our choice is about and the services that we provide. So I'm just gonna step over here and check my agenda. And I wanna introduce Elder Jean Waskisek, good medicine woman. And that's what she's bringing to us, good medicine. And so we receive her good medicine through a prayer. And this is Elder Wasikizik. I'm Jean Wasikizik. I'm a Dawa First Nation from the Week Premakong Reserve in Northern Ontario. I like to do the land acknowledgement for the land that we are on, the Stalo Unceded Territory. And I am grateful and honored to be living and working on their land in their territory. I'd like to start us off in a good way with an opening prayer. Creator, grandfathers, grandmothers, this is your granddaughter, Pishuta Washdewe, good medicine woman. I'd like to thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, Creator. Thank you for another day on Mother Earth. I'd like to thank you for some of the things that we take for granted, Creator. The air that we breathe, the water that we drink and cleanse with, the earth where everything comes from, and the fire, the sun that warms the earth and takes care of us every single day. 
I like to ask for special prayers for during this time, during this pandemic. I ask for special blessings for the people who are having a hard time, people who are sick. And I ask Creator that you send them their, their uh, support, their medicine, their people that are going to help them heal during this time, Creator. It is a day to celebrate as well. It is Indigenous Day. And all the First Nations across Canada will be celebrating this day and remembering our ancestors, our grandparents, our elders and our teachers and, and, and all the medicine people that we've worked with throughout the years, Creator, is a day to be grateful for our ceremonies. The ceremonies that we go to once or twice a year or even you know when the sweat lodge we go all the time and i thank you creator for keeping those ceremonies with us for keeping them alive the elders did it for us creator they kept the our ceremonies alive and so grateful for the elders and the healers that did that for us i thank you again creator for this beautiful day and i ask that you guide us on this journey Help us during this time. Help us to celebrate today. And help us to keep our hearts and our minds open to everything that we're going to learn today. Everything that we're going to hear today. And that you be with us as always, Creator. All my relations. Miigwech. Jean Wasikizik for that prayer. Good medicine woman. And she certainly gave us good medicine with that prayer. And for Indigenous people, it's so important. It helps us, it helps guide our, our healing journey in a way. And I was talking about those children and we're so feeling that right now. And our elders are stepping forward in such beautiful ways to help guide us through this. And not just our people, but the people that are allies that step forward with us. Just like the allies I see on the board who supported this event as well. And I just want to raise my hand and borrow from that, from this traditional land, to thank the board of directors, to say, to actually their excitement, their joy, and their passion for Indigenous inclusion is humbling. It's astounding and it's beautiful. So we would like to invite Carmen um, McKay to come forward to do a land acknowledgement and to listen to the words that he says, being from, he's from this traditional ter territory. And it's so fitting to have someone like Carmen who actually sat on the board of directors at one time and helped guide them. And so in a way he laid the foundation of what's happening today some years ago and so he's such a big part of this. Harmon is from the Sumas First Nation and he has 25 years of experience um, providing support to individuals and groups. That's a lot of experience and a lot of people's lives he touched. He's a traditional storyteller, a drummer, singer, and a cultural teacher. And he integrates his stories into song and then brings forward his teachings. He's client-centered, focused, and strength-based, holistic facilitator of skills, and he integrates culture as, as he provides skills. And more than that, he ensures that his teachings are, are based on spirituality. And so I'm really honored to introduce Carmen and I welcome him. Would um, like to begin our time singing a song. Greeting each other, greeting the day. Sequalia meant this song as a way for her to greet the day, morning time. If you were awake to greet the day, you were awake at about four o'clock this morning. 
color of the sky begins to change shortly thereafter, greeting the day. Daily goals, daily thoughts, what's needed for dinner. Is it physical or is it social? Or is today spiritual? So thinking about what was needed for just today, that was what she intended this song to be. I am going to share this song as a way for you and I to greet each other. Partway through the song, I will stop drumming and raise my hands, acknowledging you and your presence here today. Two more ideas in this acknowledging way. You may look to another in your own room. I have a kitty cat wandering around. Raise my hand to my cat. Maybe there's a human being sitting with you as well. Make eye contact in silence, raising your hands to another being in your space. Final thought, to take a moment for yourself. Show yourself some respect, closing your eyes, raising your hands for self. So one of three options you have a choice to make. Are you going to look towards me? Are you going to look towards another? Or are you going to take a moment for yourself? When I stop drumming, which will only be, be for about 10 seconds, I am going to give myself two opportunities to raise my hands in a short period of time. No words, no sentences. What I'm about to do is like whistling or humming. First acknowledgement from my mother, this earth, for all of the food, 
my clothing and for the roof and the building materials that keep me quite comfortable. I'm very grateful for this planet, my mother, this earth. Some of you calling this place home, Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada, might have a, a greater sense of the land and maybe acknowledging the Sumas, the Matsqui, and the Nooksa. One day, somebody drew a line on the earth and called that America, called that Canada, and when they did that, uh, my family lineage is further south of our location as well, here in Abbotsford. To think of you and your presence here in our community today as well, has invited the world to be present as well. The Métis, the Inuit. There is a great amount of culture here in Abbotsford. Very grateful to you all today. My mother is from Vancouver. My father is from Abbotsford. In my Hulkamalum language, Musqueam and Matsqui. My family has lived on this land for approximately 9,000 years. The history here is extensive. Our homes, I'm gonna put it at about over 5,000 years ago, our homes had heated floors. The Coast Salish, the Stalo, the smaller communities from there, like the Sumas and the Matsqui, closely connected to the ocean, closely connected to the mountains. My name is Carmen. My second name is Helping Others. And my third name is Lizard Warrior, coming at different times and for different reasons as well. I'm very grateful to all of you for being connected with me today. Hi, Chico. I appreciate you. Safe journeys. Hey, Swael. I'm Rod Santiago, a grateful settler on these Stalo lands, executive director of Archway Community Services, and humble learner on the journey of Indigenous inclusion. What is Indigenous inclusion? Indigenous inclusion is about building and fostering relationships with Indigenous peoples, relationships that inform Archway and the change for the better. We aim to create a respectful environment to explore, learn, and communicate with nations that have survived and achieved so much despite the intergenerational impact of trauma and for whom there has been systemic underrepresentation in much needed services for far too long. Partnerships. Our agency has always believed that we can accomplish more by partnering with others. In our work on Indigenous inclusion, we have partnered with local er elders, organizations, and funders, including First Nations Health Authority and the Fraser Valley Aboriginal Children and Family Services Society. What we're learning. We're working on small and big changes, some of which are more visible and some of which are less tangible, but important nonetheless. One learning, one shortcoming directs Archway's path towards the next action we are compelled to take. Our goal is to embed Indigenous culture and history as part of Archway's culture and community's culture. And then sharing what we've learned. As we work to educate ourselves, we share with you some of what we've learned through our elders, knowledge keepers, clients, and community. In this video that's coming, we'll share some ideas of how to be accountable to Indigenous communities and the public in general, and to help inspire other organizations to be allies in truth and reconciliation.
people who are providing these services. They say that what we do today impacts the next seven generations. And certainly our way is working and striving towards that. And so many lives are impacted today. In many, many ways, we're working with the grandchildren because that's the generations we're going to impact. We're planting seeds today, and it, it's so beautiful to see all those services. As Chief Dan George once said, it makes our heart sore. I want to thank Wayne Seward for that, for loaning us his song, his beautiful uh, West Coast song for the background of that slideshow. And I raised my hands to him for that. As I started, um, when we started, I, I talked about dedicating this day to the children that were found at Kamloops Residential School and other residential schools across Canada. And I believe the count is at 352. It's heartbreaking. And it has impacted our people in a big way. So at this point, I would like to read a, a poem or a piece that is about the 215, the original, and the shock that was felt and how a, a parent might have reacted during the, that first couple of days. And so this is called the 215. We searched for you. You were supposed to come home Instead, the robes came. They told us you ran away. We told them that you would never run away. We told them that you were too young to run away. We told them that you were scared of the dark. We begged them to find you. We begged them for mercy. We begged them to pray to their God for help. And they stood there firm. They stood there cold. They stood there unfeeling. They said you ran away. They said they had been looking for months. They said you were going, you were never going to come home. They were right. You didn't come home. Your dad and I searched for you. Your siblings and grandparents search for you. Your aunts, uncles, and relatives search for you. We couldn't find you. You began to appear in our dreams. You were always near the school. And you told us you didn't run away. We searched again and again. Your grandparents searched until they died. Your dad searched until he died. A few days ago, I found you. I heard it on the news. They said the number 215. I jumped for joy. You were found. I told them you wouldn't run away. All my relations. 
when we think about that poem or that piece, we think about why it's so important reconciliation is here, why it appears today in, in the, the words that we say, in the things, the actions that we do. And in that slideshow, it's so, it fills our hearts to know that is the action that's happening here. And to recognize that on Indigenous Day is so incredibly and profoundly humbling and beautiful. I know that we're going to invite you to respond to some of the, or to the 215. And if you don't do it immediately, please feel free to do that. And what we're going to do is some post some of the comments that were shared. And I think we're going to post some comments overall that were shared from today. But we still think of that, those children. And this morning I was at a pipe ceremony and I felt their spirit there. And so now we have Mikisu Isquail coming forward to sing a song for those children, to sing a song for all the children and for the hope for the next seven generations. Congratulations. Hello, um, thank you so much for uh, letting me come here and sing. Um, this morning, as, uh, as Emily had spoken, um, she had said that we had gone to a pipe ceremony. And while we were there, I could also feel the spirits of the young ones come and dance. And the whole time I thought, that we needed to have these songs, that we needed to bring this, the, our voices out. And so I'm very honored to be able to sing this song for you. Me ta 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 O shalohi O ki o wi ta he ta he O ki o wi te he, O ki o wi te he te he. Mi tai 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 tai, O shalohi. O ki o wi te he te he, O ki o wi te he, O ki o wi te he te he. Thank you. So thank you, Mikisu Esquail. A beautiful song for the children. And it is my profound pleasure to introduce an amazing man. Um, he has really impacted lives. Talk about impacting lives. He worked with so many students along the way and <laughs> He's so well known in the community for the good work he's done. And as the president of the board, I have the honor of knowing him today. And I feel like through his work, his continued work and his good work for the board, he's impacting my life and my children and my grandchildren's lives. And so just for that, I'm so grateful for this man. And so I'm, I present to you, Steve. And thank you, Emily, for uh, such kind words. I, I didn't realize that 40 years as a public servant would uh, would impact so many, but uh, so pleased that it that it did. And so pleased for your 
your kind words. So I am the current president of the board of, of directors uh, at, um, at Archway, uh, a, a responsibility I've held for a few years now. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to provide a reflection uh, from, from the board um, on what we've uh, uh, taken in today, but also from a board perspective and the governance view of, of, of where we've been and where we're going, because it was the board who several years ago uh, decided that we needed to know more about our, our, our Indigenous community and, and, and bring uh, some connections. So we can only do this with greater and deeper understanding. And last year, actually 2019, was the 50th anniversary. And we look back on the great things that Archway has done for 50 years in building community and building families and building stronger, more resilient people. Uh, then we paused to look forward and we realized that we needed to do more intentional and more inclusive work over the next 50 years to increase our awareness and understanding and true collaboration with the Indigenous communities and peoples that intersect with Archway's important work. And so we have a strategic plan and, and we've cultivated around three uh, major areas. And one of those is Indigenous relations, now Indigenous inclusion a much more uh, elegant way of talking about building relationships. And so the resulting four year strategic plan named enhanced indigenous inclusion as one of our three goals. It immediately caused us to recognize that there was much Archway could do. And therefore we realized that it needed clarity and that needed clarity would only come if we did lots of listening and lots of asking as a board and as an agency. And so out of that initial work uh, came the Indigenous Working Circle, which is a, uh, a joint ad hoc committee uh, between board members and staff. And as you saw in the slideshow, we have benefited from the Indigenous Working Circle, uh, led by Emily, by the way. And that group has ensured that each monthly board meeting we complete a learning activity uh, that deepens each board member's collective knowledge and commitment of the board to this part of our strategic plan. And so the result of that work and the three areas that we're about to focus on, uh, the, the board regularly revisits its priorities. And last week, the board unanimously supported a revised approach to our Indigenous inclusion work for the next two years. And in order to do so, we're going to ask some questions. First question we're going to ask is this, and that is, are there key personnel and client services policies that could be currently excluding Indigenous staff and clients? We're curious. We're curious to know if there are maybe some personnel policies that have unintentionally made it more difficult for Indigenous identifying applicants to be hired or retained by Archway. By reviewing these policies as a group who have been convened to look at biases, we may be able to strengthen our policies so that we can attract and keep more staff who are Indigenous. We will also look at some of our policies that guide us with how we work with, with clients to determine if better policies could reduce barriers for Indigenous clients. The next question that we're interested in asking is, can we find a way for staff and clients to feel safe in self-identifying as Indigenous? Now, Archway does not require staff to identify their cultural or language heritage when they join our workforce. However, that also means that Archway, it's not clear on how many of our staff may be Indigenous and therefore we don't know if there are ways we could be supporting these staff better or ways we could be providing services better based on their experiences or on their perspectives. Now, many of our clients do provide us with information about their Indigenous identity, but we're curious if there may be many more who haven't. So 
we need to explore how we can invite our clients to let us know about that part of themselves and for us to provide culturally safe, relevant ways to support them. And our third question is, how are we showing our Indigenous inclusion? In other words, does Archway look like a place where an Indigenous person can be found and be seen? So we'll be looking at photos and images that we display on our website and our social media posts and other marketing materials. And this will not only include how many images represent Indigenous peoples, but also those images that could be recognized as representing Indigenous people from BC or other parts of Canada. We've also committed to hosting events each year to remember such things like the murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls, which happens on May the 5th, the Indigenous Peoples Day, which happens on this day, June 21st, and Orange Shirt Day, also, also recently adopted by the Canadian government as National Day of Reconciliation, and that happens at the end of September on the 30th. Now we know that our journey to greater Indigenous inclusion can't end after the strategic plan ends in 2023, but as a board we're confident that if we can tackle these three areas, it will fund fundamentally shift our work. And the result in two years will be that Archway is a stronger, is stronger in seeing welcoming and collaborating with Indigenous peoples, such that our greater Indigenous inclusion is evident to all. Very happy to be part of this organization, and I wish to, in, in, in Carmen's words and Emily's words, I wish to raise my hands to acknowledge you and to thank you for sharing these words with me. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And I just wanted to acknowledge that we have past protocol with all of the Indigenous people here that have presented today. And that is the correct way to do things. If you want to learn more about that, probably going to have some, some things on our website that help you to understand more about Indigenous culture. And I think we posted something about residential school recently, or it's going to be posted. And so if you want to learn more about that. Today we started something that is, a, a, is one of the best conversations ever, and that we began to celebrate Indigenous Day in our way at Archway. And it's just incredible. And we call this many voices and many nations because in my mind, reconciliation begins with two. One sitting on one side of the table, maybe indigenous or myself, and someone who's an ally or someone who questions, why do indigenous issues matter? Why is this? It's a curious person who might ask tough questions. We have to start somewhere. And that conversation begins when we start to really ask questions and be open to the questions that were asked. So I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining us in this conversation, for listening to us today. And you know, we had a bit of technology issues and sometimes, sometimes, technology and traditions, sometimes they clash. But next year, we'll be together. And we're so grateful for that. So I just want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for your presence. And I pass it over to Rod. In life, there are rare opportunities when we can be um, changed and where we can be allies 
of change. And I feel like this is a time and a season for Archway or with Indigenous Inclusion. That is indeed one of those rare opportunities um, and gifts and joy. I want to also thank some people. I want to thank Kelly and Louise, Meredith and Erica for making today possible. Uh, I want to thank our presenters to Elder, Ian Vasekizik uh, and Carmen McKay, um, to Mikasu Escuello and Steve Carlton. And of course, uh, Kipako Escuello Escuteo, I want to thank you so much for all that you are leading us in with our journey. And with this journey, I want to thank you for being a part of it today, for choosing the, um, for us to change and for us to be allies of truth and reconciliation um, is also your journey. Uh, so we encourage you, we have some resources for you to continue uh, in an active way in this journey. And we welcome ongoing dialogue with you. All my relations.